Hi, I'm William Spaniel, and welcome to the first lecture on a class on Civil Wars, aptly titled Civil Wars. And just so we're clear right off the bat what this is about, this is not about the U.S. Civil War. The U.S. Civil War is a single example of Civil Wars. We're going to be talking about Civil Wars more generally. A Civil War is an armed conflict between two or more parties within a single country. So in the case of the American Civil War, you had the Union fighting the Confederacy, both a part of the United States, with the Confederacy trying to break off and start its own country. Now, Civil Wars extend way past just the single 19th century example in the United States. Civil Wars are being fought all over the place within the world today. However, if you're watching this lecture, there's a very good chance that you're from the West. And if you're from the West, you might be thinking to yourself, well, the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Great Britain, France, none of those countries are going to be fighting civil wars anytime soon. And if they're not going to be fighting civil wars anytime soon, why should I care about civil wars at all? And the answer is that civil wars affect more than just the single country in which they're being fought. Civil wars affect the countries surrounding that country, and they affect great powers in the international system, like the United States, for example. And so this lecture, this introduction, is geared toward convincing you that even if you don't think that a civil war is going to be fought within your country anytime soon, you still need to care about why civil wars happen. And the reason, or the way I can prove this to you, at least intuitively, is by taking you on a brief history of American wars from 1945 to the present. So what has the United States done in terms of warfare in the post-World War II era? Well, the first conflict was in Korea. Right? This is a picture of the Korean border. We have North Korea in the background, South Korea in the foreground, and you can see a raised piece of concrete that goes between those two blue buildings. That's the border that separates North Korea and South Korea. While the United States fought a war there, this wasn't an international war to begin with. It started out as a civil war between North Korea and South Korea. This is a civil war. What about the next major war the United States was involved in? Well, that was Vietnam, and Vietnam also a civil war between the North Vietnamese and the South Vietnamese that the United States intervened in. So the first two major wars the United States fought after World War II ended were both civil wars to begin with. What about the next major war the United States fought? Well, that was the Persian Gulf War. You might be thinking to yourself, hey, we found a counterexample. This actually didn't involve civil wars at all. Actually not true. It is the case that the war didn't start out that way. This is a picture of the Kuwaiti oil fields burning. What happened in this war was that Saddam Hussein, the leader of Iraq, invaded Kuwait, took over Kuwait. The United States raised an international task force that expelled Saddam Hussein from Kuwait. On the way out, he burned the oil fields, which again is what the, you're seeing on your screen there. So this didn't start out as an interstate conflict at all, but it ended as one. So after Saddam Hussein got back into Iraq, or after his forces got back into Iraq, there was a civil war between the Kurds in the north and Saddam Hussein. So this matters because if we're thinking about whether we should invade Iraq to begin with, we need to think about the externalities that might happen as a result of that. So we need to calculate how good of an outcome there will be in a civil war that might take place after the interstate war happens before we actually think about whether we should be invading to begin with. Well, what happened next? So George H.W. Bush leaves office, Bill Clinton comes into office, and we had the Battle of Mogadishu. So this is a Black Hawk helicopter that you see on your screen flying over Somalia. This you might know from the movie Black Hawk Down that was about this. Essentially, Somalia is a giant mess. This is the flag of Somalia. It's been a mess since we fought there. It was a mess before that, and it continues to be a mess today. It'll probably be a mess for a long time into the future. The United States was trying to intervene in that conflict, and it didn't turn out so well as you might have known from the movie. Again, though, we are involving ourselves in a civil war. Later on in the Clinton administration, this is a picture of Serbia burning. Actually, that is the tallest building in Serbia that you see on your screen. I was surprised to find out that it's only 25 stories, but nevertheless, this is the result of the United States bombing Serbia. And this, again, was a civil war between Kosovo, which is the flag on the left, that is now flown from the Republic of Kosovo, which many countries actually recognize now as being a state itself, and Serbia and Montenegro was the other side of that conflict. Again, a civil war that the United States intervened in. What about the next president, George W. Bush? Well, soon after George W. Bush took office, the September 11th terrorist attacks happened. And of course, this is a picture of his speech after those attacks took place. 
We know that George W. Bush called for war in Afghanistan, and that's exactly what the United States did after that. So the United States fought a war in Afghanistan. But again, this was a civil war at its heart. So the United States fought that war in Afghanistan primarily to expel al-Qaeda from Afghanistan, to eradicate al-Qaeda in general. But in order to do that, the United States had to fight the Taliban. The Taliban was the ruling party of Afghanistan at the time. But of course, the Taliban was fighting a civil war at the time. So the United States actually aligned itself with something called the Northern Alliance in an effort to get rid of the Taliban so the United States could try to get rid of al-Qaeda. It was a very complicated mess, and of course Afghanistan continues to be a very complicated mess today, but probably not as big of a mess as Iraq, or at least Iraq was at one time. So two years after the war in Afghanistan in 2003, the United States invades Iraq, and while that, as well as the first war in Iraq didn't start as a civil war, it certainly ended as one, and it continues to be one today, with a whole mess of parties trying to vie for power within Iraq. And of course, most recently, the United States intervened in the Libyan civil war, the United States helping to get rid of Gaddafi and install a democratic regime by launching a series of airstrikes against important Gaddafi targets in Libya. So anyways, if we look at a recent history of American international wars, we see that those international wars aren't actually international wars at all. They start off as civil wars, or they create civil wars afterward. In either case, the United States is involving itself in civil wars. To bottom line this, we do this a lot. And so what this course is going to be focusing on is how this happens, how we affect civil wars, why civil wars occur, and it's all going to be focusing on the international aspects of civil wars. So we need to understand why civil wars take place, and what other countries can do to affect outcomes in civil wars. That's what this course is going to be about. And in the next lecture, I'm going to start off by talking about macro trends in civil wars. Hope you enjoy this and hope to see you next time. Take care.